but uh, the multi tracks, it's okay. not getting much in there at all. So. All right, everyone. Well, welcome to the uh, final Gladden House session here at the Nelson Music Festival. I'm Josh Antonuccio, and uh, the Gladden House sessions are a new feature at the festival this year, a partnership between the festival, WOUB.org, which is our uh, NPR affiliate here, and the Ohio University School of Media Arts and Studies. All of the sessions will be available next week on WOUB.org. Um, so please check them out if you have not experienced any of them. The interviews, performances, there's just been so many amazing moments back here. Um, and we're really excited that Ray is going to join us for our last <laughs> session today. So uh, without further ado, please welcome Ray Wiley Hubbard. Oh, thank you very much. I'm very glad to be here. What a beautiful festival. It really yeah. is. We've had a great time. Yeah. So are you currently, where are you in your tour arc right now with the festival? I leave at 6 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Fly back home. No, we started off in Buffalo and then went to Cleveland and then... Uh, Hager's a town yesterday, and then we did the festival day, and we got to fly back tomorrow. So just a little four-day run. I don't go out on long tours anymore, like, you know, a month. You know, those are for kids that can stay in a van that long. I don't do that. I don't do discomfort very well anymore at my age. So we go out for four or five days in little areas, then uh, head back home. So uh, I saw on the release of Grifter Seminole, you guys ended up on Letterman. What was that experience like? It was very cool, as I mentioned a while ago, that uh, – about three years ago, uh, Keith Case, my agent, gets his phone call and says, this is Jennifer from Worldwide Pants, and David Letterman would like Ray to appear on his program January 9th and, and do the song Mother Blues. So Keith said, well, let me check his calendar and make sure he's not doing a happy hour gig in Waco because those things are really hard to reschedule. So luckily we weren't, and so it was really a lot of fun. He actually requested the song Mother Blues, and uh, we went up there and... Uh, had a great time. It was the studio was very cold. He keeps it at 50 degrees. Yeah, yeah. It was very cold, but it was a lot of fun. They're real nice to us. Yeah, uh, hold on. we're gonna kick a little more volume up. And if everybody wants, you're more than welcome to come up closer if you'd like to. We got cameras rolling, but you can get all around the porch if you'd like to. Don't get too close. We don't want to scare the children. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, don't feel free to come on in. It's fine. We might want to wait till Valerie finishes this next song. That's kind of. <laughs> My song in that tempo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's cool though. So, um, well, you know, I was just talking with someone today about Pete Seeger's come up a few times today. Yeah. Um, I've been noticing that a lot of people, as they age in their genre, really become kind of curators in their in that music style and making sure that the tradition gets passed on. Somebody was yeah. telling me a story about how Pete Seeger was walking by a street musician and stopped and asked him to kind of trace back where he learned that song from. Yeah. I know that you run a radio show as well to kind of curate some of that, in, even in your own music. Maybe talk a little bit about that, how that kind of ties in with how you write and how you kind of see your role in that genre. In well, your looks, genre. I'm, an, uh, I'm an old cat, but I feel very fortunate to have seen Lightning Hopkins play and Mance Lipscomb and Freddie King and Ernest Tubb and Towns Van Sant, you know, and those were the guys that, uh, you know, and, that, and being very, like I say, very fortunate to have seen them perform. And so a lot of these young kids, like, you know, Hayes Carl, I'll say, hey, man, you need to listen to this. You know, maybe somebody you hadn't heard of. So uh, I, I enjoy, like I say, I'm very fortunate. I've heard those cats play, and I feel that I need to let other people know about them, you know, that some of these young kids may not have be familiar with Matt Slipscomb. So, uh, you know, I'll tell Hayes, hey, listen to this kid, you know. And uh, so, it's, you know, so it's, it's, I think it is important to uh, pass on that heritage. I did the Pete Seeger, I guess the Hudson River Project, I guess about four or five years ago, and had a chance to meet Pete there, and it was it was it was quite an honor. So I have to ask, what was it like seeing Lightning Hopkins? I mean, what what was that experience like? It was incredible. Like I say, I was in high school. I, I, I started off in high school uh, in Dallas, and uh, I went to high school with a fellow named Michael Murphy, who's a great songwriter, and also a guy named B. W. Stevenson, who wrote the song "My Maria in Shambhala," and a guy named Larry Gross, who now hosts Mountain Stage, and we were all in. With the same high school and got involved in folk music and there was a little nightclub there called the Rubiot and Mance and uh, Lightning would play there and uh, young great performers like Johnny Vandiver and Michael, like I say Michael Murphy and B.W. Stevenson. So I got involved in the folk scene there so very very fortunate that uh, you know the idea of the lyrics were very important to me. So, but it was, it was fun. Yeah. 
So speaking of lyrics and writing, what are you working on right now? Grifter Seminole was about a year and a half out from that release, is that right? Yeah, we're going in the studio in July to do another record. So it'll probably be out in uh, um, probably February, I think, you know. with uh, I just finished my book. I wrote a book. And so right now we're, we're doing the layout where the, the writing part's finished. Right now I'm doing what they call the wreckage of the past photographs. So I'm going through old photographs, trying to you know put those into the book. And there's uh, some really highly embarrassing ones of in the '80s. Of actually a picture of me and Willie Nelson. We we both have mullets. So uh, debating about putting that in or not. <laughs> That's worth the, the purchase right yeah. there. Yeah. So like I said, we finish up the book. We're going to record in uh, July, and uh, probably the record will be out at the end of January, or February. Well, can we get a, maybe a song yeah. off that new release? We can expect to hear. Whoa, the new release. Uh, I've written the songs, but I haven't learned them yet. There's a big difference. You write a song, and, and, you've, and you've written it, but we, uh, I haven't learned it. So I bet let me, uh, since I'm already capoed up, let me do an older one, and then I'll, then I'll try a new one. All right, that'll be good. I was 41, I came out of this honky-tonk fog I'd been in. This fella gave me a book, it was called Letters to a Young Poet by a guy named Rilke. There was a line in there about fear, and what's on the other side of it. So at age 41, I overcame this fear of embarrassment. I called up this fella and I said, will you teach me how to finger pick? Because I'd always just, you know, beat the hell out of a guitar and honky-tonks. So he did and it validated what was in this book by Realtor. So this is a, it's a song called The Messenger. I'm wearing old boots with high Cuban heels and the soles they all worn I withstand tear by grace My trousers are torn and my jacket is borrowed and I'm wearing my time behind the eyes and my face. I am not looking for loose diamonds or pretty girls with crosses around their necks. And I don't want for roses or water. I'm not looking for God here. I'm not looking for Now I've worn out my welcome in certain small circles in Spanish bordellos and Confederate states. There's an angel in her leathers and kindness And she whispers my name as she smiles at my fate I am not looking for loose diamonds Or pretty girls with crosses around their necks I don't want for roses of water I'm not looking for God now I'm not looking for sex Now all the true believers are out on the road tonight And no matter what happens, well you know they'll be okay And to the rock and roll gypsies, may the last song you sing Be by Mr. Van Zant when you find yourself out in Santa Fe Now I have a mission and a small coat of honor to stand and deliver to you 
by whatever measures and the message that I give you. As I got from this old poet, he said, Our fears are like dragons guarding our most precious treasures. So I am not looking for loose diamonds here now. Our pretty girls with crosses around their necks. And I don't want for roses or water. I'm not looking for God here. And I just want to see what's next. So, speaking of new songs and new things, I heard I heard from across the way. I couldn't make it to your set because we were back here, but I heard you talking about Twitter, right? So yes. So it got me thinking. For someone like yourself, who's seen decades of music changes, and as an artist, for you, what's kind of what's changed the most, and what has just stayed the same in terms of being a player and an amazing writer? Ah. Uh. Well, you know, like I say, it, it used to be in order to make a, a record album, you know, somebody had to say yes and give you some money to do it. You know, you really had to, in the old days, you really couldn't, it was very hard to make your own vinyl album, uh, you know, very independent. You know, you uh, had to kind of go through a, a process. And, uh, and so, you know, and now then, because of technology, you know, you can make an incredible record in your home, you know the last records I've done, uh, working with Gurf Morlix and Lloyd Maines and George Reeve, we've cut them at their house, and uh, but they uh, sonically, they can, you know, if you if you, you, you can make it sound great, you know, and so uh, uh, I think that's changed. You know, it's it, that it, you, you, it's easier to make a CD now, but it still takes, you know, you, you take some take some effort to make a good one. <laughs> So, uh, with the new album, do you feel like we got to hear something we can maybe expect uh, to, to catch up with? Well, I just can't remember the songs right now, uh, what's on the new record, because I mean, I'm actually recording a bunch of my older catalog, that, that uh, and so I'm in the studio right now recording these older ones, so I kind of have that mindset, so I'm trying to think of what the new ones are. Uh, man, you caught me off guard. Like I say, I've written them, but I haven't learned them yet, and uh, so I've got about... Uh, Got about two weeks to learn them before we go in the studio, but I'm trying to think of what. Or something that's on your plate right now that you're really feeling. Ah. Uh. Uh. All right. Give me just a second here. Uh, let me think. Uh, it threw me a yeah, well, I can't even remember what's on the new record. Uh, da 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 da. What are we doing? Oh, yeah, I got one. Yeah. I don't have the right harmonica, but that's okay. I, mean, I think we all want to hear something new, don't we? Well, I'm very fortunate. I ran into, uh, uh, I, I played this festival out in California, out in Sebastopol, and I was up on stage, and I was getting ready to, I was doing Drunken Poets Dream, right? So I'm getting ready to do that harmonica ride in it. As I'm getting ready to do the harmonica ride, I look over the side of the stage, and there's Charlie Musselwhite. And so all of a sudden, like, my lips locked. I just, and so, but it, I couldn't play because it was Charlie Musselwhite. But after it was over, uh, uh, got to to uh, meet with Charlie, and then he came to Austin, and we got together and uh, uh, got a song together, wrote a song together. So it's called Charlie Muzzlewhite's Blues. I was born in Mississippi at a place. I did not choose Doctor he pulled me from my mama Said son Welcome to the blues Charlie welcome to the blues When I was 18 I come to Chicago Old brown suit and white shoes Little Walter, give me a harmonica 
Said you're gonna need this if you got the blues It's a come in handy if you got the blues You realize I don't have my harmonica Woman I love left me for another man I said, Mr. Williams, what should I do? Big Joe said, well, I've seen that woman And Charlie, you better off with the blues mm, You better off with the blues, son get to heaven but if I do I'm going to tell all them saints walking around I was born and I died with the blues I was born and I died with the blues mm-hmm. born and I died with the blues That's the first time I've done that. Oh, it's great. Yeah, Just thank great. Thank you very much. Well, can we coax one more song out of you before you, you head out? Uh, Might need a little help on this one, people. Uh, all right. Well, you, you may regret that. <laughs> She kind of looks like Tempest Storm and she can dance like Little Egypt. She works down the snake farm, snake farm. It just sounds nasty, snake farm. It pretty much is snake farm. It's a reptile house, snake farm. Ooh. She got a keen sense of humor. She got a tattoo down her arm. It's of a python eating a little mouse, wearing a sailor hat that says Snake Farm, Snake Farm. It just sounds nasty, Snake Farm. It pretty much is Snake Farm. It's a reptile house, Snake Farm. Ramona, how come she works there? She said, well, it's got its charm. There's nothing to do in the winter. Now that some kid gets bit at the snake farm. Says snake farm, it just sounds nasty. Snake farm, it pretty much is snake farm. It's a reptile house, snake farm. Yeah, what did I forget? It's a sing-along. Really? Really, really is. So help me sing it. I said Snake Farm. It just sounds nasty. Snake Farm. It pretty much is Snake Farm. It's a reptile house. Snake Farm. <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, boy. <laughs> Ramona likes malt liquor and a band from Wales that was called The Alarm. Said she cried when they broke up, she still plays the records at the Snake Farm. Snake Farm, it just sounds nasty, Snake Farm, pretty much is Snake Farm. It's a reptile house, Snake Farm. Sometimes Ramona calls me up, says, come on down here, it's getting warm. And she runs everybody off and we, you know, snake farm. Snake farm, it just sounds nasty. Snake farm, pretty much is snake farm. It's a reptile house, snake farm. Ooh, hear me now. I said snake farm, it just sounds nasty. Snake farm. It pretty much is Snake Farm. It's a reptile house, Snake Farm. The one and only Ray Wiley Hubbard, thank you so much. That was so the much. best it's ever been done. Yeah. Thank you guys. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you for joining us. WOUB.org. These will all be available next week. Thank you.